Hey everyone welcome back to another episode of r slash pro revenge. In today's episode. Can't you just unload around me? After that, uncle bankrupts his previous employer. Finally, thief tried to steal my car, accidentally filled it up with gas and brought it back to me instead. Before we get into today's episode, remember to subscribe so you never miss another episode of r slash pro revenge. Can't you just unload around me? So this happened earlier today and was too perfect to not share with you guys. I work in construction as the foreman for a new house build. The location is kinda strange, the house is 250 feet up a hill via a footpath only. All of our materials have to come up this footpath by hand, it's a pain in the ass to manually carry, quite literally, an entire house up this hill. One of our saving graces is having the two parking spots on the street at the bottom of this hill marked with official no parking signs. Unfortunately there is an elementary school about half a block away and the parents of children seem to regularly, at least twice a day, think it's okay to park in our spots. Now I consider myself a reasonable person, so if someone is parked in the spots and we don't have a delivery or a need to park a truck I will let it go. If we need the spots and there's someone parked there, however, I will ask them to move nicely and most of the time they do so immediately. Until today, I get a phone call from the lumber delivery truck that is en route to our location. He says he'll be there in about 2 or 3 minutes. I let him know I will meet him at the street and make sure he has space to park. He's carrying all of the material to frame the roof of our house, which is a lot of really big lumber and will take easily an hour to bring up the hill. So naturally I didn't want him parked in the middle of the street with his hazards on for an hour, when we have a perfectly good parking spot for him. As I begin my trip down the hill, I notice there is a school parent sitting in her car idling, assuming she's just waiting to pick up her child. I walk up to her car and politely let her know that she is parked in a no parking zone and we really need her to clear it to park a delivery truck. She scoffs at me and rudely states back. I'll just be a few minutes, and your truck isn't here. Take a chill pill dude. Before I can respond, a giant lumber truck comes around the corner and I wave to him, and then gesture towards him to the woman in the car who has now put her window back up to ignore me. I put on my best customer service smile and wave at her through the window. She put it down halfway and angrily shouts what. By now the truck has pulled up alongside her car and I politely ask her again with a stronger tone of voice to move her vehicle, reminding her that she is illegally parked in a tow away zone. Then she gives me this wonderful idea, she says, can't you guys just unload around me? Jesus, it's not that hard, I give her another smile and walk away, a brilliant plan forming in my head. I instruct the delivery driver to park as closely to her as possible and block her in with the porta potty that is at one end of our reserved spot and the parked car that is parked just adjacent to our spots on the other end. He smiles, because he immediately gets what I'm trying to do, and proceeds to expertly block this lady and her car into a little two parking spot jail. We unstrap the lumber and my guys begin humping material up the hill. Meanwhile I call the police parking enforcement to let them know the situation. At this point in time I wasn't trying to get her in trouble. I just wanted a record of why we were blocking part of the street so we don't get in trouble with the city. The very friendly traffic officer lets me know that she can be there in about 30 minutes and deal with the situation for me. Wonderful. As we continue to unload lumber the child of the parent shows up. And wouldn't you know it mum is just now realizing that the lumber truck is parked so close she can't get out of her driver door to meet her kid. She awkwardly clambers across the inside of her car and stumbles out the passenger door. Shooting glaring looks at me and the truck driver in the process. She loads her kid into the back and then begins to realize that she has no way of leaving. She comes storming up to myself and the driver and states, I'm in a big hurry, you need to move your damn truck right now so I can go. Before I can respond the driver gets a grin on his face and says, Ma'am in order to unload the lumber on the truck we had to unstrap it, and per our company policy I am not allowed to move the truck with any unsecured load on it. Sorry, this sends her into near aneurysm levels of blood pressure. Meanwhile I can barely contain my laughter. Frick your policy I have somewhere to be. She barks back at him. At this point, 
With impeccably convenient timing the parking enforcement officer shows up and parks behind the truck. She doesn't see the officer arrive and while the officer is still getting out of her vehicle I just casually say, can't you just pull out around it? It's not that hard. With the biggest it eating grin I've ever had I watch as she realizes that I just used her line on her. Frick you, she yells, and storms back to her car and angrily clambers back in through the passenger door and into the driver's seat. At this point the officer is walking up to myself and the driver, before she can even introduce herself the mum in the car slams it into reverse and stomps on the gas, crashing into our porta potty and knocking it over, and then throws the car into drive and tries to mount the curb and drive on the sidewalk. The officer, driver and I are staring in disbelief as she gets halfway over the curb and gets stuck. I can hear her screaming obscenities over the idling truck from inside her car. The officer promptly walks up to the door of the car and orders her out. My favorite part of the entire thing is watching her face go to shock as she realized she just did all of that in front of a police officer. She gets slapped in cuffs as the parking officer calls for a second unit and she is promptly sat on the very curb she tried to drive over. She sits on the curb yelling to the now two officers about how we told her she could stay there and that we never asked her to move. The traffic officer responds that she was the one who was originally called when she first refused to move and that she already knows what's going on. While myself and the driver are giving a report to the second officer, my guys finish moving the remainder of the lumber and the driver finishes his statement and takes off to go back to the yard. By the end of the ordeal she was arrested, charged with child endangerment. Her kid was in the back of the car the whole time, reckless driving, destruction of property, the porta potty and driving on a suspended license. On top of all that she also got her car towed. The kid went home with his grandma and she went to spend some quality time in a cell. I never expected her to actually heed my advice to just pull out around it, but I think next time she'll probably think twice about parking in a towaway zone, if she ever gets a license again. Uncle bankrupts his previous employer. Not sure if this is petty or pro or whatever. You be the judge. My uncle is an Indian doctor. In the 90s there was a massive doctor's shortage in Australia so the government gave him citizenship. Unfortunately you still had to sit three expensive exams to work as a doctor in Australia. These exams cost thousands of dollars, only happened twice a year, had limited sitting spots, times and had arbitrary pass, fail marks. So many Indian doctors ended up becoming taxi drivers, small businessmen etc. My uncle decided instead he would reapply and go through Australian medical school. Sure enough being a doctor for 10 plus years makes medical school easy and my uncle was top of his class. He decided since he was already pushing 40 plus had a family, he would apply to become a GP, family physician, instead of applying to be a surgeon like most of his teachers had suggested. At the time many desperate foreign doctors were applying for GP residency. They would essentially get treated like crap. They would be forced to work and paid overtime. They would not be given proper study time or leave to sit mandatory exams. They would pocket the meals, accommodation, study, leave allowances that you were supposed to be paid by the training college. They would roster you to work every Saturday, Sunday shift and if you refused they would give you a bad review and your training would be jeopardized. This mostly happened to foreign doctors as most of them would be in bad debt and highly desperate for any sort of work. When my uncle graduated, he applied for GP training in a practice that is located within an Indian ethnic enclave so that he would have access to religious food, schools etc for the kids. Sure enough this practice engaged in all of the above frickery. My uncle would work every single Saturday shift. During his dedicated study time he would have to come into work. He got reprimanded for not overcharging patients in line with their framework. Worst of all, when my aunt was really sick and hospitalized, they wouldn't give him any time off to look after her and the kids. The owner of the clinic was a white GP who was openly racist against Indians, Asians and Aboriginal people, who were a large percentage of the clientele of this clinic. My uncle bided his three years and as soon as his documentation came through making him a GP, he quit that instant. He went down to the local bank and got a loan to open up his own practice. All his old patients quickly moved with him to the new practice. The first year he struggled, but his practice quickly became known and word spread. 
Surprise. Surprise foreign trained doctors actually work well and care about their patients if you actually care about them and give them appropriate wages. Living conditions. More patients and more doctors look to work with my uncle. Within two years my uncle had a GP practice that had four doctors, two nurses, two trainees and a manager. His practice easily rivaled his original teachers. He then started two more GP practices with the money he was pulling in. These practices trapped his old teacher's clinic in a 2 km triangle. He would advertise heavily and make sure he could take as much business from his old teacher as he could. Within 5 years his old teacher's practice went from hiring 6 doctors, 4 nurses and 6 trainees to just one doctor, his old teacher, and no one else. His old teacher tried to sell up his practice to other doctors. But no one would purchase it given how successful my uncle's three surrounding practices were. He then tried to sell it to my uncle who refused to buy even at a ridiculously low sale price. Instead he waited for the bank to repossess his old teacher's clinic and then purchase it for a bit more money from the bank. My uncle then repurposed the building into his main offices from where he runs his other three practices. He made sure to redevelop his old boss's room into a staff toilets just as one final tribute to the human turd that was his old boss. Thief tried to steal my car, accidentally filled it up with gas and brought it back to me instead. My first car was a 1984 Jeep CJ7, a pretty sweet ride for a dirt pool teenager in the 90s. I was working midnights at a gas station and loaned it to my brother who was taking a date to a party. I got a call around 1am from my brother who told me he left the keys in the jeep and it was stolen. I was devastated. I was still on the phone with my brother when the thieves pulled my jeep into my gas station to fill up on gas. As luck would have it, the gas gauge on my jeep was broken and always read empty, and I worked at the only 24 hour gas stations in the area. I pressed the silent alarm and proceeded to fill up my jeep. It was a full serve station. When the thieves were out of the jeep, I saw an opportunity to slip the key out of this ignition and into my pocket. They paid for the gas, and argued amongst each other who had the keys last. The delay was enough for the police to arrive. I had to explain the story to the officer half a dozen times before he understood. The thieves had this stunned look of disbelief on their faces or I'll never forget. The cops were belly laughing telling the story to dispatch. All the while the thieves sat in cuffs in the back of the squad car. The story made most of the major newspapers the following day.